Hi, I'm Val Hart, the real Dr. Doolittle, and I'm here today with Jennifer Monahan. I met Jennifer recently at an author's conference, and as soon as I started talking to her, I knew I had to interview her because she's a kindred spirit, and you'll see why. So Jennifer grew up in Washington, D.C., in the suburbs of Maryland. Throughout her life, she's owned a wide variety of pets and loves all animals. She's had rabbits, parakeets, kittens, dogs, and even hamsters when she was a young child. And at the age of 13, when her family moved to Maryland, she and her sister were given horses. Jennifer learned to communicate with these large animals, and a mutual trust developed between her and her new friends. She traveled to horse shows, she rode on trails, and she took her horse swimming in lakes and creeks. The experience helped tremendously when Jennifer took a job with the U.S. Forest Service as a surveyor near Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Her mode of transportation to and from the job site was on horseback. I think that's so cool. Jennifer also loves to travel. She has seen 44 of the 50 United States, and trips abroad include Canada, the Bahamas, Taiwan, New Zealand, Solomon Islands, South Korea, Australia, Fiji, Great Britain, and Mexico. Currently resides in Pennsylvania with her husband and two very cool cats. Uh, is it, are the cool cats you and your husband, or they're actually sea lions? <laughs> they're in addition to us. <laughs> uh, you're also the author of An American in Oz, Discovering the Island Continent of Australia. And today I'm going to be talking to Jennifer about her trip to Australia that she took over the turn of the millennium. While in the land down under for two months, she discovered a unique landscape, wildlife, and a way of life found only in a land called Oz. Welcome, Jennifer. It's great to be here, Val. Thanks for having me. Thanks. I'm so glad you could make time to talk to me today. Tell me a little bit about Australia. What, what is it that drew you there? Australia is a very friendly country. They speak English, which is that one helps. of the, the best parts. <laughs> Being halfway around the world, most uh, it's not always the, the case. And they have the Great Barrier Reef. I'm a snorkeler, ah. and I love oh. to snorkel. Uh -huh. so that, oh, I love that. That was the big draw. And then there's okay. Ayers Rock in the center of the country, yeah. the big, big rock. Yeah, yeah, ooh. Love that. Um, and you also uh, were talking to me about some crazy critters, right? Yeah. You, you yeah. Well, there's the kangaroos and the koalas, yeah. which are unique to Australia. And I found out there's a whole lot more very interesting creatures down there that I never would have discovered if I hadn't gone to the country. Cool. So what's the most interesting animal you discovered in Australia? It was... Actually, in the prehistoric family. That's, really? Oh, wow. You know, you know we, we're very familiar with the common dinosaurs and, and the Tyrannosaurus rex or, you know, the, mm -hmm. you know, the Jurassic Park um, type. Well, they have line, lines and rhinos, and what I found out were they're marsupial. Cool. Now, marsupial means they're like kangaroos. Mm -hmm. And they right. carry their young in a pouch. Right, right. So I thought that was fascinating that their lions and their rhinoceroses were marsupial. Their lions and their and their rhinoceroses. Oh my God, that is so cool! I, I'm just I'm getting a picture of a lion with a pouch, like a uh, like a uh, like a kangaroo. That is just hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> well, we found them in a very small museum called the River Slay Fossil Museum, and okay. it, it was in the outback. Okay. And I, I mentioned it on my blog. There, I have a, a blog with all kinds of pictures, and that particular one can be found on day forty-one. On day forty-one blog. on your blog. Okay. Where is your blog? Now, my blog is called An American in Oz, Oz dot blogspot dot com. Okay, and, and American in Oz dot blogspot dot com. Right. Got it. Right. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. And the book is in a 55-day journal format. So to give a huge introduction to the book, I offer the all 55 days in pictures on my blog. Oh, cool. So Woo. if you go to, 
if you go to the archives oh, yeah. uh-huh. on the right, you'll see you'll see them all listed. They're all under July of 2010. I made sure they fit into one month. Okay. And so if you look at day 41, you'll see the link to those prehistoric lions and rhinos, and as well as another very odd creature okay. called the Chronosaurus queenslandicus. The Chronosaurus queenslandicus. That almost sounds like a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's in the, it's a, yeah, it, it kind of, well, when you see a picture of it, you'll see me in its mouth. Oh, wow. It's, it's, there's, okay. a, there's a picture of me sitting in its mouth. There's a, okay. a, a 42-foot life-size replica of this undersea creature that was wow. discovered in the outback. Okay. And it Is looks... It, it was an undersea Yeah, see, something, this is really unusual. Australia is just amazing. It used to be underwater. Okay. A good portion of it was underwater. Okay. So this outback, which is extremely dry and complete desert and not much can live out there, used to be under under the sea. Wow. So they're finding these amazing skeletons and fossilized bones of these undersea creatures. Wow. And this one in particular, this Chronosaurus Queenslandicus is was found by a farmer okay. who owned a farm called Army Downs, and it, had, it was a farm of millions of acres. I guess it, it was a good rain one day, and these bones popped up. Wow. And a, a team of Harvard professors in the 1920s went over there and ex- excavated it. Cool. So this is a. Uh, it looks a lot like a. a Crocodile with slippers. A, a crocodile with slippers. Oh my God! Very Getting bizarre. an image of that. Yeah, well, and, it, and it was big. Forty-two feet long. Wow. Its head, filled with teeth, is is twelve feet long. A twelve foot sorry. long. Yeah. Wow, head. <laughs> yeah, so you'll That's see. It's like bigger than me. my room here, my office. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's huge. <laughs> Huge. It's bigger than most alligators. I mean, just the head alone is bigger than most alligators and crocodiles. Wow. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Okay. So that's on day 41. Okay, cool. Day, day 41, we have to go visit Chronosaurus Queenslandicus. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Okay, good. And he, and he, li- he lives on Chronosaurus Corner. Chronosaurus <laughs> Corner. <laughs> With Queen all Blue. the other little Queenslandigers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, um, so what are some of the other oddities or interesting creatures that you saw in Australia um, on land or, or, like you said, in the sea? How, tell, me, tell me some more about that. Okay. In the sea, I, I snorkeled on the, the west coast of Australia as well as the east coast, and the Great Barrier Reef is on the east coast. Okay. And I saw sea turtles, green sea turtles, and uh, the fish that look it's the clownfish that's just like the one from Finding Nemo. Oh, I love Nemo. <laughs> so they were all over the place. And uh, some, countless other fish, I have no idea what they were, but they were beautiful. And they they have a grouper. They call it a Queensland grouper. Okay. It's a fish. Okay. And it gets up to be 700 pounds. <gasps> so we saw one of those. 700 pounds? 700 pounds. And there's a picture... Of that one, I don't have the the day logged on that one, but uh, it's in the around day fifty. Okay. So, or maybe somewhere between forty one and fifty, there's the Queensland grouper. Wow. And then there were sharks. There were, we had a shark moment. <laughs> when, okay, when, tell but, me. But I'm here to tell about it, so everything yeah, worked so. out. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So uh, you found Nemo and, uh, <laughs> and yeah, the shark buddies, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, they weren't hungry that day, or they yes. had, uh, become vegetarians. I'm con- I'm convinced that's the only reason I'm here. He wasn't hungry. Oh, you moment. have to tell us. Tell us the story. What happened? I was snorkeling with the giant manta rays. Now, these okay. are very docile rays, and they look just like stingrays, but they're but they're harmless. And okay. But they're much much bigger than regular rays. They're so how big? They're at least, oh, 10 to 20 feet across. Wow. So when I, when I was snorkeling above them, they looked, I mean, 
there were like three of us snorkeling above them, and each one of us got a sense that we were right above the center of it. I mean, it was wow. just, I watched it flip over and feed, and it has a big white underbelly. And oh, But somebody, we think that what happened was that one of the other snorkelers touched one, and we were wow. told specifically, don't touch them. Mm-hmm. You know, they're wild creatures. And what happens when a stingray is touched, it gets scared, it gets full of fear, and it draws in sharks. <gasps> And I was snorkeling along, and we were told to, you know, keep an eye on the boat captain just to make sure we weren't drifting too far from the boat and, you know, to check for any signals, signals that like to come in or whatever. And I, so I looked up, did my usual check every few minutes, and he's waving frantically. And I knew instinctively, I knew this was not come back in, it's time to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was. This was get in now, and I was the yeah. first one back on the boat. Wow. All of us made it back, and it turns out there was a tiger shark circling us. Wow. And those are the worst. They have, they have, they're very, very mean, aggressive, and they have mouths the size of drum barrels. Wow. So I'm, I'm just convinced that wow. they weren't, they weren't hungry in that moment. But we packed up, you know, we all got on board, packed up, and left. Mm. Oh my <laughs> but, gosh. But the experience of those manta rays wow. was just so memorable. It was just yeah. amazing to be swimming with something so huge and so gentle. Yeah, so as to say, they're giant, gen- uh, gentle giants. Yeah, yeah. They they eat plankton like mm-hmm. whales, so they just open their mouths and they're filter feeders, and they uh-huh, uh-huh. they just take in the tiny little plankton, and that's how they eat. Wow. Oh man. So oh, that's that's pretty scary. Yeah, I'm glad you yeah, that was a heart that. pounding moment. Oh, it's <laughs> pounding. <laughs> oh yeah. You say oh, the least. Yeah. Oh god. Oh, okay. Ah, so um I'm glad you survived. Me too. So tell tell me some more. Tell me, uh I know you said Australia is full of strange animals. What else? What else did you see? Well, the the second strangest creature I saw I saw was the was a marsupial mouse. Okay. Now, I was I was hiking, this one was, I mentioned snorkeling on the West Coast and, and snorkeling on the East Coast. And this is a country very similar in size to the continental United States. Okay. So I, I traveled many, many miles through this country. And at this point, I was in the center, the, the heart of Australia, they call it. And it's, it's ironically, it's, it's where Kansas would be. And I joke hmm. about, you know, <laughs> Not being in Kansas anymore, but <laughs> yeah. being in a land called Oz. Uh-huh. But, okay, um, Dorothy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Where's hey. Toto? Did you take Toto? Uh, Go ahead. No. <laughs> no, I didn't see him either. But you saw um, blue monkeys? Did you see any blue monkeys? In no Australia? monkeys. But oh, no did... flying monkeys. <laughs> no, oh, but we did go to a place <laughs> called Monkey Mia. Monkey but, Mia. Oh, we have yeah. to talk about that. Okay, go back to the. Go okay, ahead. we'll go. Okay, this marsupial mouse, and the only reason okay. I knew it was marsupial was because I had read the the park brochure. I was hiking in a park okay. called Kings Canyon, and okay. it's right next door to Ayers Rock, which is a very famous mm-hmm. big rock. It's a sacred spot to the Aborigines, and a, a, if you haven't heard of it, if you see a picture of it, it might ring a bell because it's 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 yeah. I think, yeah, it, it's a famous landmark. I, I think yeah, I've seen yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Big red rock, right? Yeah, it's kind actually called Uluru. Uluru. But, but that's the Aboriginal proper name of it. Uh, but the, okay. um, for this purpose, I'll call it Ayers Rock. Oh, and it's a sacred rock? Is that Very, is very that? sacred. Yeah, yeah, Uluru translates to the word meeting place. So oh. There are many, many different communities of Aborigines that live there okay. in that area. So it's, okay. Very Did you get sacred. to meet any Aborigines? I saw a few. Never actually spoke to any, but okay. they were actually, they were actually hard to find. They they stay off the beaten track and away from the crowds. A lot of them don't speak English. Okay. And so okay. they're very few. Oh, just but this curious. mouse. Yeah. Well, we were hiking up into what's called Kings Canyon, and it, I mentioned it's like next door to Ayers Rock, but that means it's two, it's a two-hour drive. Oh, <laughs> but, but, in, okay. but by outback terms, it's next <laughs> it was door. next door because uh-huh. there's absolutely nothing between the two. Mm-hmm. And my mom, Jeff, and I—he's—he um, he was my travel partner in the, in the, throughout the book, and he and I were hiking down off this canyon, Kings Canyon, and there's this mouse. 
that popped out from behind a rock and I oh. and I stopped to look at it and it looked exactly like a mouse we have here. Okay. But because it's indigenous, it's native of Australia, it's marsupial. And had a little baby mouse poke its little head out of, oh, no. out of its pouch, I would have just thought I was in a fairy tale, for sure. Oh, how cute. <laughs> it sounds like an animated something, you know. Oh, my God. It is. Australia is like being in a in a fairy tale. Now, there's a lot, there's a lot of very difficult things about being in Australia. The, yeah. the heat that we encountered there yeah. was over 120 degrees. Wow. I think oh. 122 is the, was was the max recorded while we were there. Wow. And that's I was from Florida at the time, but and this was heat that I had never ever experienced in my life. It mm. it takes it took my breath away. Mm. Mm. That yeah. kind of that kind yeah. of heat. Wow. So there's a lot of flies in Australia. That's the difficult part about it. Oh, it's it, you know, it's okay. They have a lot of deadly snakes that if you step on one, it could be the last step you take. You know, there's a lot of very, very dangerous things about the country, too. Mm -hmm. But we, I was coming from everything will be okay and everything was okay. So yeah. it worked out. Yeah. Great. Oh, man, that's good. I'd love to see. Did you get a picture of the mouse? No, I didn't. Oh. I didn't. He, but, well, I like. I was so I was so enamored by just seeing it that I forgot to get my camera out because he yeah. did stop. He just just sit and look at us for a little while. How how tall was it? Three inches. Oh, three inches. Okay, very so very a tiny small. little mouse, yeah. tiny little thing, and a tiny little baby mouse, with little head sticking out of its. I wish pouch. I had seen that. Oh. <laughs> that would have really. Oh, I would have started I'm... pinching myself at that point. <laughs> Am I imagining this? Am I dreaming? I'm <laughs> yeah. dreaming. Yeah. Oh, that's too funny. I love and, it. And then a couple of months after I, well, not a couple of months, several years after I came back from Australia, I was talking to a friend of mine who lives there, David, who is mentioned throughout the book. He is an, an American who moved there 40 years ago, and he's an extensive reader and researcher, okay. has no TV only listens to radio and reads and reads and reads. He mm -hmm. told me this amazing fact about Australia. Okay. That all native mammals to Australia that are indigenous to Australia, they are all marsupial. They're all mar every single one. Every single one. I wonder why that is. I, it's theory? the only place that occurs in the world and you know, the koala is a marsupial. The, there's another animal called a quokka, and it's the size of of a rabbit or a raccoon. Okay. And and we saw those on the west coast on an island called Rotnest Island. Okay. And those are marsupial. And I have pictures of those. Um, the quokkas are on day seven okay. of my blog. Okay. And they're very, very cute. And they're all over this island called Rotness Island. And the reason the island is called Rotness is because the the Dutch explorer that discovered it thought it was covered in rats. <laughs> he thought these cute little quokas were rats. Okay. So he called the island Ratness. <laughs> <laughs> and over time, it, it evolved to a much kinder word of Rotness, R-O-T-T-N-E-S-T. -T -T. <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. Ah, I love it. Okay, great. So, there's just these, this just amazing amount of the wildlife, and for all the friendly ones, they have the deadly ones, and uh -huh. and it is it is important to pay attention to where you know where we walked and and you know what we you know to learn as much about the the wildlife and and the landscape as possible. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm. So do you want to go back? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I I've traveled a lot as as you as you mentioned several of the countries that, um yeah. and this is the first one that I ever felt as if I was home. Wow. Oh, really? It was wow. it was a connection that I had never experienced before and it's I think it had a lot to do with the the people are so friendly. Uh-huh. They love Americans, and the funny part is they love our accent. <laughs> and we love theirs. <laughs> we love theirs. <laughs> did you, 
Did you find yourself talking like an Australian by the time you left? No, not at all. And like I can go to Alabama and I'll start talking like a you know, southerner well, uh-huh, within uh-huh. an hour of stepping into that country. Yeah. I mean, in that country. In, in that state. Yeah. Well, it kind of is a country. It's, it's kind of it's its, its own country, it? yeah. Yes, it is. But mm-hmm. in Australia, it is the most difficult accent. And I noticed that my friend David, who has been there for 40 years, doesn't have a smidgen of accent. How odd. It's that difficult to pick up. It, oh, wow. So it actually is hard to pick up. Okay. It's very, very hard to imitate. Very okay. hard. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. And the only thing I noticed about David was he had a couple of funny slang terms mm-hmm. that he mm-hmm. used mm-hmm. and yeah. things that, you know, just, you know, we would never use here. And that's that's the only way that he, there was any distinction that he was, had been in Australia for 40 years. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Were there any other interesting animals or, or creatures or experiences that you want to chat about? Yes, there's there's a, uh, this is an, a sea mammal, I suppose it would be called. It's like the Florida manatee. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Um, the Florida manatee is called a sea cow. And they're very big and round and they move very, very slowly and they do breathe air. And they like warm water, so they they're okay. tend to be in Florida. Well, in Australia, they have a very, very similar creature, and theirs is called a dugong, and that's D-U-G-O-N-G. A dugong. And okay. A dugong looks just like a Florida manatee, except like the Florida manatee has a tail like a beaver tail, mm-hmm. really big and round and flat. Well, a dugong has a tail like a dolphin. Oh. And that's, yeah, that's the only real way you can tell the difference. And I, I have a picture of the dugong on day 21. Okay. Of, of my blog. So you can see a, a dugong and its baby. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, they're very cool. cute. Cool. How yeah. big do they get? My guess is 8 to 10 feet. Okay. Wow, 8 to 10 yeah. feet. That's a big, that's a pretty big sea cow, a dolphin sea cow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, And because they stay close to the surface and they move so slowly, boats have to be very, very careful if they're in the area to to watch for them because one of the biggest dangers that dugongs and manatees experience are getting run over by props. Yeah, yeah. So that's something that um, they have to be aware of. I wonder if we had a race between a Florida manatee and a dugong which would win? Do you think the dolphin tail gives it any? Oh, uh, that's a good kind of question. Kind of advantages, I wonder why. <laughs> well, you know, it's like I wonder why one would develop a dolphin tail. Yeah. And one would have a a beaver flat, big round tail. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there are differences in the in the how they move. Yeah. Yeah. My sense is that the dugong is a little bit just a tad sleeker and a tad mm-hmm. more mobile. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. I I have, I've got all kinds of ideas about how that came about. (laughs) (laughs) I bet there are stories. Do the are there any Aborigine stories that they tell about the like how these were created or where they came from? Did you hear any of that? I I do hear a few stories. The Aborigines have a, a story of of creation. Their their view of how the world was created and how everything came to be, and it's called the dreaming. Okay. And what I learned most about was the landscape in the dreaming. Uh-huh. And okay. And there's a there's a place in the outback called Devil's Marbles, and that is a, a would be about day. 39 or 40, I think, in the in the blog. Okay. And they're giant boulders, comp- uh-huh. perfectly round spheres that have been eroded over time. Hmm. And that's that's the scientific <laughs> explanation. But in the dreaming, it's actually was a giant serpent that laid her eggs there. Oh wow! And the serpent is the the governor of of water and provides the water for the outback and it's a very sacred 
element in the dreaming. And okay. Aborigines say it still lives to this day, and mm-hmm. and there's still evidence that it's it's around. Interesting. Wow. That makes then, sense. You know, I've seen some Aborigine art, and I think they they do include a serpent, don't they? And yeah, the serpent artwork. is a. The, it's actually called the rainbow serpent, and that's the rainbow a, a, serpent. Okay. Yeah, that's a very big uh, element in the dreaming. Okay. And there was another big snake that was in the southern part of Australia, right about where New Orleans sits in the United States, in that reference point. Okay. okay. And there's a there's a mountain range called the Flinders Ranges, and it's a, a natural amphitheater. It looks like a baseball stadium. Okay. And there's a picture of it on the blog, and that's where another dreaming occurred. And and the amphitheater is actually what's left from the the giant snake that laid down, oh. that circled, encircled a uh, Aboriginal tribe. Well, they're not called tribes; they're called communities. Okay. And it encircled this community, ate everybody, <laughs> and oh, laid down okay. to die. Hungry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that two Aborigines escaped, and that's how how we know the story because they told us what happened. Ah, uh-huh. okay. Yeah. Lucky somebody went lived to tell the tale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Interesting. So there's a there's a lot of this these stories in the dreaming. There's books and books and books you can get on mm-hmm. on the dreaming. It's also called the Dream Time. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, okay. and that's that's the Aborigines Interesting. story. Interesting. Oh, I love this. Wow. Okay. Um, anything else you want to tell us about today? Mm, let's see. I think that that covers the the main okay. animals, and I mean, other than there's several varieties of kangaroos. There's oh yeah. You know, there's wallaby. There's rock wallabies. They can they they climb rocks just as easily as um, in a, a mountain goat. And really? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So That's impressive. They're, they're in the mountains. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> and, okay. And they're all all throughout the outback. It's, oh, a, it's a fascinating place. Yeah, it is. Oh, I'm so glad you took some time to tell us about it today. And thank you for writing the book. And I love the idea of the blog where we can actually follow your, your travel and, and trips and kind of feel like we've been to Australia or certainly whet our appetite to go there and to visit. And um, I hope that, that the Australians listening uh, will get a kick out of it, too, and we'd love to invite comments and feedback and anything else that we that you'd like us to know. Uh, I'd love to hear other people's stories as well, I'm sure. So to give you the blog link again, it's an americaninoz.blogspot.com. Um, and let's see. Um, Let's see, other ways they can contact you, Jennifer. Uh, you have a website? you have another website? I, I have two others that are related to the book. Uh, okay. One is, is my author website, which is my name, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-M, as in Mary, O-N-A-H-A-N.com. Right, JenniferMonahan.com. Great. Yeah. Good. Thank and, you. And then the book there's a beautiful picture of the outback on the website an american in oz dot com right a n a m e r i c a n i n o z dot com american and american in oz dot com yeah got it great so and they're all they're all linked with each other too okay so I had a really f- a great time putting the blog together I dug up pictures that were my own I found that others that that related to the story, and it was my readers that said it just has brought another depth to the to the experience, and it's, it was a lot yeah. of fun to put together. Oh man, I love that! I love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Oh, okay. Well, thank and you for did... for talking with me today. I really yeah. really enjoyed it. Yeah. It was did... great meeting you last <laughs> month, and I'm, yes, it was. It was it was a, it was a great opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I felt the same way. Um, yeah, I think. Do you have a final message for our audience, our listeners? Well, I I love all animals, and animals have just brought so much joy to my life, and and it's. I just feel it's so important to take care of our animals, the ones we have. Yeah. Just feed them, love them, and they will love you back unconditionally. 
Yes. They're, they're just the best. Yes, they are. And they have so much to share. And I'm so glad to know about our, our Australian animals and uh, interesting lives and, and ways of the Australians. So, all right. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, I think we'll just we'll finish it here, and uh, I'll look forward to hearing about what else you do. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, everybody, go to uh, Jennifer's uh, blog and leave us some comments or, or uh, um, information if you want to email uh, Jennifer. Do you want to give them that? Or just let them contact you through your website. Uh, they can, yeah, they can contact me through my website. Though. Very good, JenniferMonahan.com. That's the easiest way to get to me. Excellent. Okay, great, great, great. Thank you, thank okay. you, Jennifer. You're welcome. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for having me. Okay, Bye-bye. you're welcome. Bye.